We have an update on the look and feel of NXT TakeOver 31 tonight. Now, during the pre-TakeOver media call earlier this week, which I was on, Triple H said that there was going to be a different look and different feel to NXT TakeOver this week. He didn't elaborate at the time what that meant, but it certainly got people talking. Now, over the last 24, 48 hours or so, there had been a lot of reports that we were going to see the return of live fans to NXT TakeOver, starting at TakeOver and going forward for NXT. There'd also been discussions and reports that NXT was going to be moving from Full Sail University to the WWE Performance Center. We would also see the return of live fans and the return of... NXT to the Performance Center and moving from Full Sail University was a multi-pronged approach. Basically, it was a health and safety thing. I think most importantly, there have been it's on a it's on a university campus. I think that's the most important thing you have to figure out there. And previously, they had had university students helping out with the productions of the show, whether they would just be assistants or camera operators, whatever. That hasn't been the case going forward. I think it's safer and better to have NXT out of the Performance Center. It doesn't make sense for them to be off site in a densely populated area like Full Sail University. So I totally agree with that decision but also there appears to be more to it now because we've seen an announcement in the last couple of hours about what this new look and new feel is when it comes to NXT starting at NXT TakeOver because we have the Capital Wrestling Center debuting tonight on NXT TakeOver 31. Now what is the Capital Wrestling Center? Well it was first reported by Sports Illustrated, and when I say reported, that means WWE sent a press release to Sports Illustrated, <laughs> and they reported it. Uh, it said that NXT TakeOver 31 will emanate from the completely redesigned WWE Performance Center in Orlando, Florida, the Capital Wrestling Center. Now, the Capital Wrestling Center name, if that does sound familiar to you or it does ring a bell, it should, because it's a tribute to the Capital Wrestling Corporation that was founded by Jess McMahon in 1953 and run by Vincent J. McMahon and it was basically the precursor to WWE. Now on our Wrestle News 365 social media platform several times we've done the what is your favorite WWE logo in history and we've included the Capital Wrestling Corporation that was founded by Jess McMahon and run by Vincent J McMahon. Essentially it was WWE, it was the precursor to WWE and I've always been a massive fan, a massive fan of the logo. Every time I've put it up on social media I've had numerous comments of people saying what is that logo because it's a logo that is way ahead of its time. It even looks great today so I'm really I'm really glad that they've brought that back. It's a nice touch to the history of WWE. Sometimes a lot of the time with when it comes to WWE they're very hesitant to look back on the past and uh, embrace their heritage and embrace their roots because nobody will remember that and I'm not saying that anyone remembers the Capital Wrestling Corporation from 1953 so don't get me wrong there but it's a cool logo and it's a cool concept so I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. Now, Triple H spoke to Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated. He said, quote, it's an historic callback to where this all began. We gutted the Performance Center and it's now rebuilt. So it feels like we're going back to the beginning. To me, it feels like we're going back to 1953. Just like then, we're doing something different and new, taking the business to a whole new level. Now, basically, from what WWE has released so far, obviously, we'll get the first look at it. I'm assuming before showtime tonight, they'll do a, a social media release and we'll get a first look at this Capital Wrestling Center. But essentially, it's NXT's version of the WWE Thunderdome. There's been a lot of discussion over the last few weeks. Is NXT going to emanate from the Thunderdome? Is NXT ever going to go inside the Thunderdome? There were rumors that NXT TakeOver 31 was going to take place inside the WWE Thunderdome. Obviously, now we know that's not the case and we now know why that's not the case because NXT was building a Thunderdome of their own and Raw and Smackdown it looks like once the residency is up in the Amway Center in Orlando, Florida at the end of October, that the Thunderdome will be no more and WWE Raw and SmackDown will be touring across Florida. They're already scouting buildings for that. So NXT isn't going to be a touring uh, brand for the time being and its TV tapings have never been uh, a touring brand. They've always been from Full Sail University. So what do they do? They've done what WWE did and they've made their own WWE Performance Center. So similar to Raw and SmackDown's home at the Thunderdome, the Capital Wrestling Center will have video walls surrounding the ring and virtual fans to keep the distinct feel and look of the black and gold brands. 
Triple H said, The Capital Wrestling Center captures the feel and vibe of NXT. We have all the bells and whistles of the Thunderdome, but we'll keep that NXT feel. It's edgier, darker, and raw. You're walking into the ultimate heavy metal soundstage, said Triple H. That's really interesting, but I suppose the most newsworthy and noteworthy part of this isn't just that NXT is moving into the Capital Wrestling Center, isn't that we're going to have virtual fans in there. I suppose the biggest news coming out of this is that in addition to virtual fans, NXT will also bring back a limited number of around 100 live fans in attendance as well. So this is the first time that we've had live fans back in the building for professional wrestling in WWE. Now, they haven't said they haven't said if it's going to be um, the Performance Center recruit. I don't think it is from what I've heard and what I've seen online. Support for Wrestle News 365 is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Now, Manscaped, for all of my UK fans out there, Manscaped just launched in the UK. Over here in the United Kingdom, we have gone for years and years and years without using the right tools for the job. But now you can be one of the first men in England to experience their life-changing product. But it's not just limited to all of the great fans over here in the UK. This offer goes worldwide. So all of my friends over in America and around the world that are listening to this, this offer still does apply for you. You can still use our code. Uh, but I've got to tell you a quick story first. Now, there have been so many times, right? I'm a guy. Uh, you got you got to groom down there, fellas, right? That's the most important thing. you got to keep yourself trimmed. you got to keep yourself proper. And uh, a lot of the time, I've been guilty of this, of using the wrong tools for the job. I've had incidences, I'm not afraid to say it, where things have been nicked, snagged, or in fact cut down there because I wasn't being careful enough and using the right equipment. Now, that just shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen. You don't want to be worrying about cutting yourself down there. Do you know how painful that is? I can tell you, it hurts quite a lot. And I wish... And hope to God it never happens to me again and it won't happen to me ever again because I'm using Manscaped products. That's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. The Manscaped engineering team has perfected the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created. Big statement, but it's absolutely true. They have just released the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0 in the UK. It's also available around the world as well. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. So those cuts and snags that I was telling you about before are a thing of the past. And let me tell you, when I tell you this is premium, I mean premium. The battery will last up to 90 minutes so you can get a longer, perfect shave. And not only that, you don't want to be cutting yourself and trimming yourself in the, all over the bathroom, getting hair all over the place. That's just disgusting. The lawnmower has a waterproof technology that allows you to groom in the shower, so no more mess. And one of the coolest features, one of my favorite features about the lawnmower is the LED light which illuminates grooming areas for a closer and more precise trimming experience. So you can shave longer, you can shave more precisely, and you can shave in the shower. What more do I need to tell you? They've also upgraded to a 7000 RPM motor with quiet stroke technology and let's not forget about the charging stand. You can show off your mower loud and proud because this intelligently designed stand is a convenient charging dock powered by USB. So if you are listening to me speak right now, I want you to experience it firsthand for yourself. Let's get that bush to tush clean and you can get 20% off and free shipping. Yeah, you heard me right there. 20% off and free shipping. All you have to do is use the code 365 wrestle at manscaped.com. Make your testies their besties. That's 20% off and free shipping. Not only are you getting 20% off, you're getting free shipping as well with the code 365 wrestle at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code 365 wrestle. Your balls will thank you. It looks to be a case as they are local fans that have been invited personally by WWE to come to the show. So it really is the first time that live fans have been back. Obviously, we kind of had that when you had the Performance Center recruits, but they had a brief couple of TV tapings back in... I want to say it was about June or July time when they invited friends and family of WWE personnel to, to be in the crowd at the WWE Performance Center. But then we had another COVID outbreak at the time. So that became they kind of st stepped back from that because I think they were 
worried about what that would look like from them from a PR point of view. And you've got to remember, this is at the time which WWE didn't have their strict COVID protocols in case. At that time, there was no mask wearing policy. There was no testing. It was just, how are you feeling? And maybe some temperature checks. There wasn't social distancing. None of the stuff that they have in place now. And they brought back friends and family. And then they had a massive COVID outbreak at the performance center. So they backed off. But now is the time which they feel comfortable to do it. And they're going to have live fans return to WWE programming for the first time. Now, speaking about this, Triple H also said, quote, there will be a contingent of fans in attendance, some of which will be talent. Others will be friends and family and some will be fans. So like I said, it's a hybrid. I don't I was right, basically, with what I was saying. Well, there is going to be some talent, but it's going to be friends and family and some uh, VIP invited personnel. He said, quote, we will take every safety precaution that there is. All of this was signed off by our medical staff. Everyone that walks in the building will be PCR tested, take a questionnaire and be medically screened. There will be plexiglass pods with fans that are in groups and the groups will vary in size. Everyone will wear masks and each group will never be near anyone else. So I guess we're going to have to wait and see how this goes. Um, I would suppose... Look, my issue with fans returning, and it's been the same, whether it's WWE, AEW, even the stuff we've seen on the independent scene, if it can be safely done, then I don't necessarily have a massive problem with it. My only problem is, is that can it be safely done? Uh, Triple H is saying that they'll have PCR testing. I don't know if this means it's going to be a full COVID test. I doubt it because that is very expensive. They are going to have social distancing, mask wearing. I credit that. When it comes to them being plexiglass pods, like with how AEW have been doing it recently, you can only have one like pod essentially per household. And you've seen some independent wrestling or you've seen concerts that have been going on at the moment whereby they're socially distanced out and the pods are per one household, essentially. If WWE can do it like that, I don't have a problem with it. If it's talent, talent would have been covid tested anyway so they should be fine being in there if it's friends and family of talent then they can stay in that one pod i'm interested to see how they pull this off my concern is like with anything about this right now is can it be done safely if it can be done safely i don't have a problem with it this is definitely in my opinion the trial run um the wwe performance center isn't an outside building which is i suppose a concern as well with these return to um, fans to events, they've been in outside buildings. Daily's place for AEW is an outside building. These independent shows have been usually outside buildings. They've been on football fields or things of that nature. And NXT in the Performance Center isn't like that. So that would be a concern as well. But we'll have a look. I'm sure we'll find out over the coming days about how this works. As I mentioned at the start of the video, NXT is going back to being a live show. In recent weeks, they've basically been taping NXT a couple of hours before it airs. Uh, but that isn't going to be the case going forward. They're going to be in the Capitol Wrestling Center. They're going to be live on USA Network. I think this is their latest attempt to compete with AEW. And they absolutely need to. So NXT looks to have their own version of the Thunderdome. I'm fascinated to see it, how it works. It's going to be interesting to see uh, live fans back in attendance. It'll be interesting to see the atmosphere, I suppose, of this, because if it is indoors and they have 100 fans and the virtual fans as well, there is going to be some kind of atmosphere in there. And that would be nice to see a professional wrestling programming with a with a good atmosphere, I suppose. That's been the thing that everyone, everyone has been struggling with during this pandemic when it was with no fans. And the Performance Center now is better because it's got the enhanced audio on there, but it's still not the same as having live fans in the building. I think AEW have done quite well with their having live fans back and it certainly has brought some atmosphere back and they've done it safely and it certainly benefited the program without a doubt. So I think NXT is looking to capitalize on that. And I think it's a cool concept. I'm all for throwback concepts. I'm all for embracing the past, looking back on the past, looking at something that's cool. I think it's fun. I like the idea of a darker, edgier and more raw version of the Thunderdome. Some people might say one of the problems with the Thunderdome is that it is so polished and it doesn't have that gritty or live feel. But we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. But Triple H living up to his word that NXT TakeOver 31 tonight will look different, feel different. Uh, and that is by the Capital Wrestling Center. So I'm excited to see what this looks like. We will have some NXT TakeOver 31 match previews coming out on the channel later tonight. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. But most importantly, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on the Capital Wrestling Center making its debut tonight on NXT TakeOver 31? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Do you like the idea? 
idea? Do you like the idea of live fans being back? What are your thoughts on live fans being back in attendance? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I'll be sure to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys on this channel. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button as well. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestle News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video, along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.